the year is December 25th. There are many people who hate this day. The atheists hate this day. The Jehovah's Witnesses hate this day. Satan desperately hates this day. And he does everything to undermine the name of Jesus Christ. He wants to wipe out the very thought of Christ in the hearts and minds of people. And what he has done is he has caused a division right in the body of Christ. And a group of believers will say, we don't celebrate Christmas. We don't believe in that thing. It's pagan. And a group of Christians will say, we understand that December 25th is not the birth of Christ, but we still want to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Once upon a time, when I was stupid, I thought I knew everything. And I bashed everybody who celebrated Christmas. Until God humbled me, and I began to look into the scriptures, and I began to question myself, and ask, what am I doing by rejecting to celebrate Christ? And we immediately like to target December 25th as a pagan day. Oh, it's pagan. It's evil. The phone that is in your hand is pagan. And we still use it. WhatsApp? Is pagan. Because every evil dirty thing can be done through this. And we still use it and we say, we are using it for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Oh, Facebook! That's pagan. In fact, that idiot doesn't even believe. And everyone who openly rebukes anything that's against the biblical standard, he blocks them out. Mark, or whatever the second name is, Susan whatever it is. And he doesn't believe. But we all use Facebook. Oh, we are using it for the glory of God. We suddenly become very pious and spiritual when it comes to defending our conveniences. And then, we have another thing that is bad. This is bad. This doesn't have God in it. But this has every bad and symbol in it. This is a man. Whose image is in this? That which belongs to heaven, give it to heaven. That which belongs to God, gives to God. This is bad. But without this, I can't buy this. Without this, I can't buy this. And we use this for the glory of God. I'm excited that we have buy this there that is sold only for 700 rupees. They actually cost 1,749 rupees. And we are selling it for 700 rupees. And it is, it will be only up to January 1st. After January 1st, we'll sell it again to 1,749. If you want, buy it. Uh, today and this coming Sunday. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is we use so many things that is pagan today. And we say, well, we're using it for the glory of God. A lot of people question me during this month. Brother Lawson, do you believe the birth of Jesus is December 25th? Do you know the date has pagan roots? Do you celebrate Christmas? I will share these and hope you will think about it. I do not know anyone who believes that Jesus was really born on December 25th. And I do understand the Catholic pagan roots of such. I don't believe any Christians in this world, which born again, the Bible believing Christians ever believes that Jesus was born on December 25th. I don't believe, and I don't think you believe so. 
And we do understand that this is a packet root. This is having a packet root. If you look at the celebrations days, in the early time when Christians, if you do a little bit of research, the early times of Christians who were actually pagan before they got saved, they celebrated in everything. They rejoiced and celebrated, or even on December 25th, they celebrated the birth of their Lord. But when they got saved, December 25th became the most sorrowful day for all the Christians in those days. Everybody is enjoying what happened to her? It became a sorrowful day. Some became very self-righteous. I'm better than you because I did self-righteous. But some kind of self-righteousness in some. Some of them were extremely sad and sorrowful. And so during those times, the early church gathered together and said, Well, let them celebrate the pagans. We will celebrate Christ. The Christ of the Bible. And it evolved in that thing. That even today, everywhere in the world, Christians do not. When we talk about Christmas, we don't talk about Baal, Tammuz, or any pagan gods. We don't talk about it. In fact, nobody even in the world do, do know about Baal or anybody. When we talk about Christmas, we talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. We talk about the Virgin Word. We talk about what God has done. That He came in the form of a man. The truth is, He was not born on December 25th. But the truth is, He was suddenly born in this world as a human being. Now we all will say December 25th is pagan and all that thing. But there is something that we need to understand, dear friends. Like for example, let me see just how consistent we are with the calling of the days of the week. If you are calling, if you say it bad, and if you say, you know, the thing is the Bible doesn't tell you to celebrate Christmas. So if you don't, it is not a sin. Nor the Bible says you should not celebrate the birth of Christ. And if you do, it is not a sin. But the Bible does say in Romans chapter 14, that every one be convinced by his own conscience. And if he is keeping a day, let him keep it for the Lord. And if he does not, let him keep it for the Lord. And so the Bible gives us a freedom and the Bible is quiet, silent and saying, Bible never tells us not to celebrate, nor the Bible tells us to celebrate, but yet the Bible gives us the freedom to choose and be completely having a clear conscience why we do and what we do and who do we celebrate. You know, Friday is named after the Lord Frida. God is Frida. And that's why we say Friday. But yet it is not a Christian name. It is a name after the goddess called Frida. And we never say anything against that. Saturday is named after the god Satan. Or Saturn. And we gladly say, today is Saturday. I will see you on Saturday. And we don't go against that. Sunday is named after the sun god. Wow. You say, where are you going, brother, on Sunday? I'm going to Sunday, I go to church. <coughs> we are not against the Sunday. But yet it's a name, it is named after the pagan god. Monday is named after moon goddess. And yet we say, tomorrow is Monday. And we don't bash about it. But you do understand the Bible doesn't say Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The Bible says first day, second day, third day, fourth day. So if you really want to be consistent, you've got to stop saying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And keep saying one day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day. That's what the Bible says. The months of the year are also pagan, so I trust you do not use them if you are against the month of Christ. 
February. February, the name is derived from Februa. April, this, is, this name comes from the Latin. April is indicating a time of fertility. They say, on the month of April, we have Bible conference. We don't bash those months, dates of the, days of the, uh, names of the month of the year. Just the word. We just got some garbage on the internet for December 25th and we just tried to be self-righteous. We got to be consistent. July is named for the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar. When is your birthday, brother? July. When is your birthday, sister? July. Stop saying that. August is named for Octavius Augustus. Caesar, Emperor of Rome. We say August 15th. Our calendar is not accurate and some consider it bad and yet you will need to write the year 2018 when you sign your name. And yet it is bad. Our money is bad. Our television is packed. Uh, if you come to my house, my home is not decorated. I do not do any decorations. Just so that I don't want to offend any wicked brother or sister. If they come to my house, I don't want to offend them. But I celebrate Christ. And I'm not against anyone's decorating their home for Christ. I believe we should celebrate the great thing. I believe we should decorate ourselves. I believe we should decorate Christ and we should do it for the Lord Jesus Christ. We talk about Christmas trees, how pattern and yet we have television in our home. And our home television is really good. Somebody said television is a toilet glass. And we are comfortable with TV. Not with the Christmas tree. We celebrate birthdays. My son's birthday, my auntie's birthday, my mommy's birthday, my daddy's birthday. In the Bible, there were only two birthdays, and both the birthdays ended with a death. And yet, we celebrate our birthdays. So we can just go on and on and on. But I just want you to think this. Any traditions, any culture, any day, any time that exalts Christ, I'm there for it. If any tradition is exalting the Lord Jesus Christ, I will grab every opportunity in celebrating Christ, in making Christ known in the world. Especially December 25th, for the month of December is one of my favorite December uh, year, uh, month of the year. Why? Because I get the freedom to proclaim Christ to anybody and everybody. I can stand on December 19th, right there in the heart of the city, use that microphone where 2,000 to 3,000 people can hear at one moment, and I can tell everybody that Jesus Christ is God, manifest in the flesh. to do in the month of August. But I can do it in this end. And nobody can point a finger at me. And I will use that opportunity. And I will celebrate Christ. I can go to a village and call the village to come and hear the gospel. And they are not saved, but they will come because they get to wear the best of clothes on that day. They wear the best of clothes and come for night service last night. Yet people come to hear the word of God. Yesterday we had Muslims and Hindu children here filled in this place. Why would some parents end? And then you know. But there it is. Another option to share the gospel. I was telling Carlton last night that village that I grew up, everyone from the age of 5 to 25, not a single individual in that village has not heard the gospel from me. Everyone from the age of 5 to 25 have heard the gospel from 
in, in one of one person. Everybody knows in that village who I am and what I preach. Thank God for the faith. Thank God for the opportunity to make his name great. Even if it is pagan, Christ is exalted. You go to anyone in the market, a Hindu or a Muslim, and say, 25th December, what is it? Whose birthday? He's not going to say Tammuz or, or uh, Baal, or he's going to say Jesus Christ. Any tradition, any culture that will exalt the Lord Jesus Christ, I give God the glory for it and grant the opportunity to celebrate Christ. Amen. Amen. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 1. Now we said that, let's go into the Word of God. Some, some Bible scholars believe that when Angel Gabriel came and gave the message to, I don't know, there's no biblical truth into it. Matthew chapter 1. Some Bible scholars said that the angel came and gave the message of nativity to Mary on the 25th of March. On the 25th of March. And they say on 25th of March, the angel came and gave the message that, that, that the virgin will be Virgin will conceive a child in a womb and he, his name will be Jesus and he will save his people from sin. And then if you keep March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. They say nine months after March, Jesus was born. They say Jesus was announced on March 25th, he was born on March 25th and he died on March 25th. Now, I don't believe in that. That's what some Bible scholars do. I believe that Jesus was born somewhere in the month of October because that's the right month according to the Bible. But we do not know the exact date when Jesus Christ was born. If you go to Syria, they celebrate the birth of Christ and some in London also on January 6th we will celebrate Christmas. Some people in Bengal, Calcutta, if you go, they celebrate Christmas in the month of August. As long as you celebrate Christ, continue celebrating Him. You don't stop. The one and only person who wants to undermine the name of Christ is none but Satan. He doesn't want you to give glory to Christ. And He will do everything, even one day, to take you away from it. Oh, I don't want to go to church on 25th December. Because that's bad in there. Hey, but you've been working on Sunday. You don't go to church on Sunday. See, 25th December is not the major issue. The major issue is the small little faithfulness that God told you, openly revealed to you, that this is what you need to obey. We are fine with sending our children for extra classes. Camp. And miss Christ. We are fine by not faithful in reading the Bible and praying the simple things of life. And yet we become December 25th against Christ. Back in the day. But God says the simple known fact, you continue to obey that first. The fact. The known fact we need to. Put God for it. If there is something that is really that you are not convinced with, don't make it as a big issue and a hobby horse and a bad doctrines of your life. The things that are very easy for you to understand. You know what does not bother? Somebody said, what bothers me is not that which is difficult to understand from the Bible. What bothers me is the things that are easy to understand. What should bother you and me? Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 2. 
And we are going to look from verse number 1 onwards. Matthew chapter 2, verse number 1 onwards. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, thank God he was born. Amen? He just didn't fall down. He was born. He was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Oh, the beautiful thing of the Bible, the King James Bible, is that word king is a small case. And if you have a modern Bible, it's a capital K. Somebody he does not like to give the Lord Jesus Christ the glory. So they make Herod with a capital K and Jesus with a small K. Look at that. In the days of Herod the king, behold, there came foolish men from the east to Jerusalem. Is it? Wise. And the wise men still seek him. The wise men will follow him. The wise men will find him. The wise men will grab every opportunity to worship him. Seek and you shall find. Saying, where is he that is born? King, capital K, King of the Jews. You know, when, it, when that word King is used for Jesus, the word of God uses the capital K, and the word King is used for Herod, the word of God uses the small K. I'm going to say, come on, I don't know, that's, no, it's not small, it's not a little thing. That's a big thing that somebody does not want to give God the glory. Because in a modern Bible, when it is speaking about they will put the capital K and then when it comes to Jesus they will put the small K. Say, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the the star in the east. You know why we celebrate Easter? We are not celebrating Easter. That's the red. That garbage you get it on the internet. We celebrate Easter because we celebrate the star of the East. The East star. And that star is of the Lord. Leading people to Christ. Leading people to Christ. Say, so where is he that is born, King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the East and have come to worship him. The wise men said, we came to worship Christ. We are come to worship him, not worship Mary, not worship Joseph, not worship any animals or angels, but we are come to worship him. We are come to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Now they did arrive on December 25th. They arrived late, about three to four years later they arrived. <coughs> They said, no matter what, we thank God. We will grab this day to worship Him. Amen? Amen. We'll worship Him. When I think about Jesus on 25th December, I'm not thinking about God. Are you? I don't think so. When I think about Jesus, I don't think about the Roman Catholic Church or any other church or a Baptist church or a Methodist church or a Pentecostal. I am thinking about Jesus Christ. I know who I am. I know who is God. And I believe, I am sure you know who you believe and who is God. When Herod, you know, we are living in a world where the world is against Christ. Christians should be grabbing these opportunities to gather together to worship Christ. Amen? Amen. Not sit at home and, and elbow the devil and say, hey, I am on your side. No. Yeah. There are people struggling in the Middle East country who are underground, cannot worship God, and here we have freedom to worship God. And we have people blasting Christians who are worshiping Christ. Why? December 23. 
If on Diwali vacation, if I want to celebrate Christ, nobody can stop me. I will celebrate Christ. He's the light of the world. If on Ganesh Chaturthi, because it is Ganesh Chaturthi, nobody can stop me from worshiping Christ. I will, because my God is the God of prosperity. I will worship Christ. Just because on that particular day I will have a service does not mean I am worshipping any other God. I know who I serve. I know who I believe. Amen? Amen. I think we need to grow humble and become people of grabbing opportunities to make known Christ. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. You know who, who is troubled when Christ is born? <laughs> you know who gets troubled when Christ is born? Satan. Herod is troubled. And so he's going to make everybody go and celebrate Christ. Herod is troubled, not Christ. <laughs> not Christians. When was he born? I don't know. I just believe on October 9th. That's a good day, I believe. That's because it's my birthday. <laughs> when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem the day. There is a king that is born. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded them where Christ should be born. You know what Satan does? He does some Bible studies also. He calls the scribes. I want to know where Christ is born. Why? The Bible says in verse 5, And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. You know what is the most important facts today in our life? Is the written word of God. Amen? It is written. Not said, not heard, not seen, but it is written. You know what should be our final authority of our faith and practice? Not church, not pastor, not miracles, not visions, not signs and wonders, but the written word of God. Amen. The Bible. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, but out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Amen? Amen. There's a prophecy that was prophesied about 4,000 years ago. If you read the book of Genesis and verse on the fourth day, the Lord created what? Let there be light. Exactly 4,000 years later, the light was born in Bethlehem. Let there be light. Exactly 4,000 years later. But out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ. You know when Christ was born, the prophecy was made, you know what Christ is to us? He's all and all. Look, turn your Bible to Isaiah chapter 9 over there and look what the Bible says. Isaiah chapter 9. You know, if you're going to be against everything, we should throw our gardens out of our home. We should not throw any plants in our home. If you're going to be against a tree. You need to throw all the plants out of your home. You need to throw the television out of your home. Throw your mobile phones out of your home because they are pagans. If you're going to use those things to glorify God, <laughs> let's use this day to glorify God. Amen? <laughs> Oh, oh, Isaiah 9 says, For unto us a child is born. Six is the number of men. God was manifest in the flesh. 
For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Who is given? A son is given. He's a gift given by God. Unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. You know what his name shall be? And his name shall be. You know what God will do to your dull life? He'll bring joy. He'll make your life wonderful. When you come to Christ, He makes your life wonderful. Amen? Amen. You know, when you have no one to counsel you, He becomes the counselor. He says, come unto me. I am wisdom. I will give you wisdom. I will give you knowledge. I will counsel you. He says, the mighty God. Who is He? He's the mighty God. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the mighty God. I do not It doesn't bother me what Jehovah's Witness believe. It doesn't bother me what Islam believes. I'm thankful my Bible says that the Lord Jesus Christ is the mighty God. He's the everlasting Father. He becomes a father to the orphans. He becomes a father to the fatherless. He becomes the father to everyone who comes to the Lord Jesus Christ and puts their faith in Him. He's the everlasting Father. Everlasting Father. The mighty God, the everlasting Father. You can take a front seat. The mighty God, the everlasting Father. And the Bible says, the Prince of Peace. You know what Christ brings in our life? You know what Christ offers to the people in the world when they come to Him? He offers peace. You know what others offer? They offer to make your life peace by peace. But only Christ offers peace. I thank this day. For me, Christmas is every day. It's every day. Today is a special day. The only one who waits is the devil. The devil is not rejoicing that Christians are in the church today worshiping God. He is having a headache. The devil is not rejoicing that Christians are celebrating Christ today. He is losing his glory. Today the whole world focuses on Christ. You go to the shopkeeper, he may be a Hindu, he may be a Muslim, he may be an atheist. He is making money in the name of Christ. He brings prosperity even to an unbeliever. And he is not thinking about Satan today, he is thinking about Christ today. That's all God does. The only person who is sorrowful today is Satan. The whole world. This morning I opened my Facebook and I saw I have an atheist friend on my wall. And that lady is from London. And she's an atheist. But when I opened, you know what she was doing? She had a Christmas carol going on on a wall and saying everybody Merry Christmas. And she doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. But she's saying Merry Christmas. Even an atheist is beginning to give a headache to the The only one person who is ignored today is Satan. He is ignored by everybody today. I thank God for it. It means a lot to me. So he brings peace in our life. And so when you come back to Matthew chapter 2, the Bible says in verse number 7, then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired them diligently what time the star of the moon. So the wise men came and they went to Herod and said, Where is he that is born the king of the Jews? With a capital K. To the small Herod the king. He 
got jealous. He was afraid. How come somebody else is going to be called a king when I am present? He was troubled, the Bible says, at the birth of Christ. So he called them and he asked them to study their Bible first. Look at verse number 8, Bible study. Even Satan studies the Bible. That's why when he came to Christ in Matthew chapter 4, he came with the Bible. And he also said, it is written. Look at verse 8. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently. In verse number, uh, in verse number 5, what they are doing? They are studying the Bible. And they said unto him, the Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the Bible. The heavens, when he had privately called in verse number 7, the wise men inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Verse number 8. He then sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. He's, you see, when the wise men came, they are not in the manger. Here in the house. Jesus is not a baby. Jesus is running around playing cricket. He's three and four years old. He's a child. He's not in the house. Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again. Uh -huh, that I may come and worship him also. What he wants to do? He wants to destroy him. He wants to kill him. He wants to make known that he wipes out the name of Christ from the history of the world. He doesn't want you to celebrate him. He says, I also want to come and worship him. He has a wrong motive. You know what he wants to do? He wants to worship him just as an excuse so he can go and kill Christ. Verse number 9. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east. Where is the star? The star of the east. Star of the east. That's the east star. The star of the east which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. You know what the star does? The star leads people to Christ. You know when people put a star, some people may not understand the meaning of it. But a lot of people I do understand the meaning of it. My Christ dwells in this home. That's why I have a star. My Christ dwells in this home. Amen. Amen. I don't think it's right to bash and banish everybody, call everything as heaven. But there is biblical truths and facts in this. And people would star. Christ dwells in this home. I went to many years ago, 12 years ago. I was invited to somebody's house and I went to wonderful people and everything and ignorantly they had something on the wall and I read it and they had this beautiful table, lunch and everything was great and the lady was amazing, the man was great, amazing and they had this great conversation going on with me and we were talking and we were enjoying and while I was eating and talking I saw this picture on the wall that says, Christ is the head of our home. And he's the silent <laughs> listener of every conversation. <laughs> my Christ is not the silent listener in my home. He talks in my home. <laughs> Don't let Christ be the silent listener of your home. Let him talk. Let him be the director of your life. Amen? <laughs> Many a time we ignorantly we bash everything and unnecessarily create chaos and confusions in our Christian life. If I have a star in my home, 
I'm telling the book, Christ is in my life. Christ is in my home. And when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. You know why we have problem, why we have? We just have problem with everything because we came out of something that was planned. Because I came out of the Catholic Church and got the truth in the Bible, does not mean I bash everything about the Catholic Church. A lot of people do not believe in Trinity. They do not believe a God is one God in three persons. Why? Because the Catholic Church gave the, point, uh, the term Trinity. Oh, we don't believe in one God in three persons. That's just one person. And that is a jelly. If you don't believe one God manifesting in three persons, you cannot be saved. And yet there are people who call themselves as Christians because they believe in partners. They believe Jesus is the Father and Father is the Son and Son is the Spirit. Who died on the cross? Did Father die on the cross? Did God die on the cross? No, oh, the humanity of Christ died on the cross. We have to understand that. And so we just say, well, I don't believe in Trinity because the term was coined by the Catholic Church. They got something right. Certain things are right. Yeah. I know everything is wrong. Maybe 99% is wrong. But there are a few things that's right. And because even that few things, I'm not going to banish it. There's something true to that. So just because they do everything does not mean I, I refuse to reject even the biblical truths of life. They put the star, so that should be pattern. No. If you put the star, why do you put the star? You need to understand and ask this question, why are you doing what you are doing? And if your conscience is not why, then don't do it. I have no respect for those who don't celebrate Christmas. Because they know that for those people who celebrate Christmas and they have no idea what they're celebrating. You understand what I'm saying? So if you're celebrating, you better know what you're celebrating, whom you're celebrating, why you are decorating your home. You better know why you're doing it. Because if you do have come somebody, somebody comes to visit you in your home, a weaker brother, then you know what you need to do? You need to have an answer to give from the Bible. Hey brother, this is why I do why it is, and only a Bible and show you. So we are not letting an ignorant brother or sister fall into any kind of unnecessary trap. And so the Bible says in verse number 9, when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced. Once upon a time in the history, we don't read that in the Bible, but one of the symbols to identify Christians living under the king because of the fear of the Roman Catholic Church in slaughtering the Baptist Christians, they had the symbol of bread, they had the symbol of fish, and they had the symbol of star, the symbol. So people when they saw that star or fish or a bread or a grapes on the wall cow and in the caves, they knew that this is a settlement of Bible believing Christians. They were symbols used by early Christians because they were hiding underground because of the fear of the Roman Catholic Church for killing Baptists and Christians. And these were the symbols that were used by early Christians. And let us not just throw the baby along with the bath water in the tub. Be careful. We got to be a little careful of what you do. So when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. You know what I do? When, I, when I'm driving, I still see a car. And in that car, if I see some scripture, I rejoice. But in the recent days, I don't rejoice anymore. Because I do read a great scripture and in the front, there is like, I see Jesus is flying. There is a rosary hanging. And, and you know, the, the car is so fast and, and, and the chain is like this. 
And I see, at first when I see the scripture, I'm like, wow, maybe this is a Christian. And then I see a Rosary in front. But I always rejoice. They become a symbol when I see scriptures in the car, or when I see scriptures in someone's home, or when I see scriptures in somewhere. Like, I don't know. I really want to find this man out. If you have noticed, traveling along, there is a yellow color plate with a black writing, and he's putting scriptures. I have no idea. And if I find that guy, one day I want to take him for dinner with me and sit with me, sit with him, and talk and encourage him. I have no idea who is this guy. Straight up, amazing. Someday I feel like I will be shocked to find out that he was from a cultic religion. But doing something for Christ. And he is anonymous. Nobody knows who he is. You go there and he is using scriptures from the King James Bible. Not modern Bibles. He shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Wow. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish in everlasting life. And have everlasting life. Wow. Whoever, you go to Margot, he's there. You go to Pandem, that is there. You go to Vasco, he's there. You go to Benjamin, he's there. Everywhere he's putting it up. And this man will have a great reward in heaven. I hope to find out this man one day. I really appreciate what he is doing. Because every time I see that scripture on the tree or on the electricity pole, in which I am exceedingly glad. Because I see a sign that there is the word of God exalted. You know, in my mom's house, outside my mom's house in the gallery, if you go, there's a big huge thing that I I put the scripture and I put that outside of the door. Christ Jesus came into this world to die for sinners. It's there up there, huge. Nobody comes to a house and there's always witnesses of morning sun. Are they Christians? But everyone that walks around, they know they are Christians. And if they are believers, they will stop and they say, Are you born again Christians? Yeah. Exceeding great joy. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Every Christian should be a star for Christ. Every Christian should be a star for Christ. You should be leading people to Jesus Christ. You need to travel with them until they find Christ. Be a star for Christ today. Be a star. Because that will bring great, exceeding, great joy in the lives of everyone that finds Christ. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped who? They didn't worship her. They worshipped him. They worshipped him. Christmas is not about New Year's. I love New Year's. It's not about decoration. I love decorations. People have given me and I enjoy it. If anybody has this given me, I just continue to enjoy it. It's about, it, it's not just about star. It's not about decoration, but I love decorations. It's not about gifts. We all love gifts. I don't like Christmas, but give me gifts. <laughs> It is about worshiping Christ. Amen? Amen. It is about worshiping Christ. You know something that we wish as a Catholic, you know what? I waited for this other thing. Because I would get new dress, new shirt and pants. Am I right? Yeah, there was a day when my mom and dad would buy us new clothes. And we would make sweets in our home. And then suddenly somebody put in the mind, it's pagan. And we 
just gave up the joy that we were supposed to have in Christ and not in churches. Our final authority is the Word of God, the written Word of God, not church buildings, not men, not internet, not phones. You know what Christ said? He will bring exceeding joy in our life. Don't let Satan rob that joy from you. You know this guy? This guy? Poor fellow. He believed in Jesus. But he did not receive him. Why? Right? Because he's almost reverent and uh, worshipped as God. And because of that, he chose not to trust Christ. He gave up trusting Christ. And when he died, he didn't take the name of Christ in his mouth. Because this is better. How many of you like it? I like it. Every time I get, I like it. But this is pagan. But I use it for the glory of God. This is pagan. Don't go on the Facebook. Oh, bro, I use it for the glory of God. What's that? I use it for the glory of God. Let's use this day for the glory of God. Let's not give up the great exceeding joy that Christ brings in our life. Amen? Amen. And when they were come, verse number 11, and when they come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. They worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts. And we always heard, oh, that's a pagan religion, that's why they're giving gifts. No, 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 no. Giving gifts we give because the wise men brought gifts to Christ. Amen? The wise men brought gifts to Christ. Forget about paganism here. There's nothing to do. Can I tell you something? Satan will always counterfeit Christ. Christ doesn't counterfeit anybody. Satan will try to do everything to grab the attention away from Christ. As a Christian, you should do everything to grab a possibility to glorify Christ. Everything. They fell down and worshipped him, and when they had opened their treasures, sometimes we don't like Christmas because we have to give gifts. No, it should not be so. They presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. But this is what Christ does when he changes your life. When you come to Christ, when you cry, you find Christ, this is what Christ does. There's something Christ does to you. Verse number 5. And being warned of God. Today we don't like warning in the church. Pastor, you're too warning all the time you're warning. You all the time taking names. You all the time taking names. <laughs> no, we all will be hated. I'll tell you what God does. He wants you. Amen? Amen? He wants you. Because He says, I love you. You know my children? I love them. They're my blood relation. You know who you are? You are related to me in the blood of Christ. Amen? And I believe if you're my spiritual brother and sister and spiritual child, should I not want you? And if I don't, then I am not a good man of God. Then I am a counterfeit. A good godly servant of God will warn God's children. He who does not warn is not the man of God that you should look for. You know what you need to do? Run away as soon as possible from such. He who does not want, because God wants. Look at the verse number 12. And being warned of God in a dream, that they should not return to 
Don't go back to the world when you find Christ. You celebrate Christ and go in the path of righteousness. Amen? You continue to celebrate Christ, continue to worship Christ. And we warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They departed into their own country another way. Amen? God says, now, okay, there Herod is there. Don't go there. He's going to take everything. He's going to tie you and beat you and ask you for all the secret. And then he's going to go and cause problems to the child's business. You take the other one. And Jesus says, I am the way, you take my way. He says, I am the truth, you follow my truth. He says, I am the life, you take my life. That is what Christmas is all about. It is about the Lord Jesus Christ, born in the human form, to bring exceeding joy in yours and my life, to bring peace and give counseling, to make your dull life wonderful, to tell you that He is the everlasting Father and the mighty God. And He tells you, don't go the way that you came out of. You came out of something, now you follow Christ. You got born again, now you follow Christ. Christmas is all about Christ. For me, Christmas is all about the sixth alphabet. C, H, R, I, M. That's all I know. When I think about Christmas, I do not think about Krishna. I do not think about Muhammad. I do not think about Buddha. I do not think about Tammuz. I do not think about God's Diana. I don't think about Karen. I don't think about Bob. I think about the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like when I think about Monday, I am not thinking about the moon goddess. When I think about August, I am not thinking about Augustus of Augustus the Caesar. When I think about July, I am not thinking about Julius, the Emperor of Rome. I'm just saying July. August. You understand? So when I think about Christmas. I am not thinking about the pagan festival. I am thinking about my Christ. And I am happy with that. To worship God, not just on Sunday. I thank God that we get an opportunity once a year to come in the middle of the week to gather together and worship God. Amen. I like Christmas because I get gift. I like Christmas because the offering increases that night. Because more people come. I like Christmas. Because I want to keep the door of God's house open to invite people to come, to celebrate Him, to worship Him, and to fellowship in His name. Amen. It's all about Him and Him alone. Amen? Amen. Shall we all stand?